Dustin Smith here again, curator of reptiles and amphibians, fish and invertebrates in North Carolina Zoo. Becoming a good conservationist requires good knowledge of the species, the habitat they live in, as well as the causes for their decline. The next step is forming a really good partnership. Once you have a good partnership and a good understanding, you need lots of patience. The most rewarding part of the job for me is just to work with the animals. I love working with the people that work with the animals, as well as the people that I partner with to help save these species in the wild. So it's a little bit of everything. It's working with the animals as well as the people. Alligators are mean because they have all those teeth and no toothbrush. Actually, they're not really mean at all. They're just completely misunderstood. Best question of the day. I try to teach people as much as I can about snakes so that they respect them and understand they have an important part to play in the ecosystem. They shouldn't be mistreated just because they don't have legs. Some of these species can actually help us. Some researchers are using copperhead venom to help treat breast cancer in laboratory, which is amazing. The best thing for you to do to feel safe is to learn how to distinguish all the snakes in your area, especially the ones that are venomous and the ones that are going to be most commonly encountered. So we have a lot of different reptiles at the zoo. There's not one that I would say is harder to care for than any of the others. We try to do our best to provide the best care every single day to every animal at the zoo. We have a lot of venomous species of snakes at the zoo, but just remember, venoms are injected and poisons are ingested. So there are a couple species of poisonous snakes, but just not here in North Carolina. Alligators actually eat mostly small prey items. Most people think they sit there at the edge of the lake or the river waiting for big deer or pigs to come by, but the truth is they're going to eat a lot of small things like crayfish, snails, small fish, clams, things like that. depends on the type of snake you're talking about. Some snakes can have as many as 100 teeth or more, but most snakes have teeth that are small and they're sharp and they're curved backwards to hold onto their prey. They are very strong. A snake's body is made up entirely of muscles and lots and lots of ribs to help support those muscles. So just imagine that entire body is full of those strong muscles to hold onto their prey. They actually aren't. They are actually ectothermic, which means they get their body temperature from the environment around them. So in some cases, their body temperatures can actually be warmer than ours. They're all very closely related. In fact, the only real difference is in the name. But most of the time, toads in North Carolina are going to have dry, warty skin, and they lay their eggs in long strands, whereas frogs lay eggs in clumps, and they usually have more moist skin. This is a great question. The best thing to do is watch where you walk no matter anywhere you walk when you're outside, wear closed-toed shoes, and really, really look around. They have a great camouflage, and they blend in really well with their environment. Sturgeon are this really cool fish that you can see in our streamside complex. They're prehistoric looking, and they have these bony plates just like alligators. There are a lot of animals that I wish we could have at the zoo that we don't have, but hopefully we'll get them soon. With our Asia expansion, I'm really, really excited to see us get king cobras. That's a mean question. The Caribbean is a great place to work. There are a lot of reptile and amphibians that are in need of help. I think this question's from my wife. And that's a really good question. That's actually one of the main reasons I pursued this field was actually having a snake as a pet. But I recommend anybody out there interested in having one, do lots and lots of research and start with small species, maybe something like a corn snake. Don't go with a really big python. I don't know. It just comes naturally. The gopher frog is one of the most endangered animals in all of North Carolina, which is why we're doing everything we can to help save it. If you want to learn more about that project and our other conservation programs, just visit our website and look at the conservation page. Jealousy will get you nowhere. If you remember the date, November 2nd, 2019, Miami won 27 to 10. Uh, Eastern indigo snakes and hog noses are probably my favorite snake, but as far as reptiles, there are so many different kinds of reptiles that I like that I can't say one's my favorite. But one of my favorites at the zoo is definitely the Komodo dragon. There are so many options. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, there are none. Well, make me an offer. We use a small device called the snake probe. And when we use this device, this will let us know whether it's a male or a female. Another way that we tell sometimes, depending on the species and the size of the animal, is the length of the tail. Usually males have a longer tail than females. That's a difficult question. Uh, not many. Maybe a jaguar?
I'm most proud of the most well-rounded programs. Programs that involve a field component, they have an educational component, and they actively involve saving the species in the wild. Any of those projects are the ones I'm most proud of, and all of ours meet all of those criteria. Hmm. The most well-mannered animal at the zoo is probably, probably me. Uh, but the reptiles and amphibians, they have good manners too. Hey everyone, thanks so much for all the great questions. I had a really good time answering them all. Hopefully I was able to get to yours as well. Uh, if you guys have a chance, please tune in next week to our next Ask an Expert segment.